Good afternoon. This is Cody with The Connected Camper. Thanks for checking back in. Today's going to be our second installment in our generator runtime series. Today we're going to be testing the Kipper 3500 Ti. This is an inverter generator from the early 2000s, actually probably about 2006-2007 range. I actually bought this machine on Facebook Marketplace for $80 and it didn't run, it didn't have spark. I ended up replacing the CDI and got spark back only after I had it completely tore apart. So it is put back together now, it runs. However, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how efficient it is compared to some generators from 2022 and 2023. So here's the generator that's gonna be tested. It is an inverter generator with smart with uh, auto idle, so we can turn the auto idle on to conserve, uh, conserve fuel. And we will do that because we're gonna be doing that with all the other generators. So we're gonna see how efficient this machine is here today. The gasoline has been drained out. And so here in just a second, we're gonna be going outside and we'll get it uh, filled up with gas, hooked up to the camper so that we can charge up the batteries so that can be our load. And then we'll get off to the races. So for today's test here, I'll be going through and showing you the tools that we'll be using. The first tool here is our 20 watt LED work light to indicate when power is lost, make it abundantly clear. Next up is just a little kitchen timer to give us an approximate reading on uh, the duration of the test as the time lapse is running along. Next is just a kilowatt meter to show voltage and frequency coming out of the outlets on the front of the generator. Next is one half gallon of 87 octane gasoline. This gasoline is treated with Lucas upper cylinder uh, lubricant and injector cleaner. This is just a fuel conditioner. And then, yeah, so these are all of our tools. So for today's test, we have the Kipper 3500 Ti. Uh, the engine size on this Kipper is 250 cc's. Its rated run power is 2800 watts. And half of that, 50% of that is 1400 watts. The gasoline fuel tank size is 3.43 gallons. However, just a reminder, we're going to be doing one half gallon of fuel at 50% load for this test today. That fuel that we're using today is 87 octane gasoline. This is the same gasoline that we're going to be using across all these generators. So we have as controlled of an environment as possible. Again, just the testing conditions are 50% load with one half gallon of fuel. Now we're going to use our, our runtime that we get out of our test today to extrapolate and get the full fuel. If the fuel tank was full, see how long that would run um, at half load. The advertised runtime, it was difficult to find this for this generator since the marketing materials were so old. Um, the marketing materials are from 2007s. So this is 16 year old marketing materials. And even those I struggled to find, I ended up finding this on uh, RV forums. This was the number that people agreed on was about seven hours at half load. Um, we're also going to be measuring the kilowatt hours provided at half load over the duration of time here. This is going to be a good indicator of how efficient our generators are um, across the classes, across the sizes. And so this is going to be some, a good comparison that I'm going to keep coming back to. Now down here, we also have the cost of the test. Um, and so the cost of the test is actually $1.65, one half gallon of fuel costs $1.65 in, the, in my area. And so that's our, our testing parameters today. We're also going to measure the cost per kilowatt hour as well. Um, and that's going to be another indicator of uh, just the cost to run each of these machines per hour.
Now for today's test, you'll notice I forgot to put the temperature gauge in here. You'll see that pop in here in just a second. Um, but a little bit of backstory on this generator. The previous owners of this uh, gave it to me in a non-running state. Uh, it didn't have any spark. Effectively, I had to replace the CDI on the very front of it. If you take a look at the, the three little dials above the choke lever on this, you'll see the green, red, red. That is the CDI, and, and something went bad in it to prevent this machine from producing spark. Uh, now, it was completely tore down all the way so that it was just the, the bell housing rotor and the block connected and everything else was taken out of this. I got it all put back together and then got the CDI put in there and got Spark back. Um, now, this machine, the previous owners estimate that they have over a thousand hours on it. They ran the air conditioner in their horse trailer and based on that little bit of smoke right at startup there this has been sitting for a while but that little bit of smoke on startup is not uncommon for higher hour generators when they um, have been sitting for a little while um, so i'm really not surprised by that it doesn't burn any oil past that um, so this is a solid machine the inverter puts out great electricity it's easy to start um, this is actually going over to my neighbor's house um, he's going to use it for a cabin that they have as well as just in the event that there's any power outage they can power fridges, freezers, things like that. And that's this generator is great. I mean, if you can't tell, it looks exactly like a Honda EU 3000 or a Polaris uh, 3000. These are great machines. And so as you'll see here, we will lose power uh, in just a couple of moments. And uh, it really doesn't stall out. It really doesn't start, or it does stall out. It really doesn't um, sputter or anything like that. It really just shuts down. Um, and I was really pleasantly surprised by the results here. Now, as you could see in the video, the kipper ran for one hour and 18 minutes, um, or 1.3 hours. Now, as we do some math there, based on the tank size of this generator, it would get about nine hours of runtime at half load for the fuel tank. Um, and that's on track with what I heard from the previous owner when they would run the air conditioner in their horse trailer. Now the estimated runtime shoots a little bit low, but I'd rather be a little bit low than be disappointed when I only get six hours or something out of it. Now the kilowatt hours provided is 2.2 kilowatt hours, um, and we get this from Solar Assistant. We can see that the 2.2 uh, is defined here, and then and that's actually the exact same as the Westinghouse in the size smaller of generator here. And so we can see the cost of the test was, uh, the cost per kilowatt hour was 75 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and so this is really, honestly, this machine performed quite a bit better than I anticipated. Um, I did not expect a 16 year old generator to be up here competing with uh, other generators. I don't know why. I thought this was going to be a little bit less efficient, whether it was the inverter or the size of the engine, etc. cetera. Um, but we'll have to see how the other generators in this class uh, compare and the smaller generators. We'll have to see how they compare. But it, it is interesting. I'm, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that this matched the Westinghouse. All right. Now that's it for the Kipper. Again, I was very pleasantly surprised by this one. It performed very well, and I'm very interested to see what the results look like for the other generators in our series, whether that's the Win 3800, the Gen Maxes, I might even throw some Predators in there. I might see if I can get my hands on a Honda. We're going to see what these generators perform like when it comes to their efficiency as well as their runtime against what their manufacturers say, if their manufacturers even make any claims. Now again, this is Cody with The Connected Camper. If you have any ideas for future videos, any other generators that you wanna see added to this series, feel free to like, leave a comment below, and be sure to subscribe so you can see all of the future videos. Thanks for watching.